Welcome everyone. We're about to get started. My name is Chad Crossland and I'm the marketing manager here at Double Radius. First of all, we hope you've been keeping safe and we thank you for joining us today. We're excited you're here with us as we host Cambium Networks for this webinar on wireless connectivity for video surveillance and CCTV with CN Vision. Our guest speaker today from Cambium is Saqid Ahmed. Saqid has an engineering background and worked with Motorola Solutions for 12 years before starting with Cambium in 2016 as a VP of EPMP Business. Before I turn it over to Saqid, just a couple quick housekeeping items to mention. First of all, if you have any questions during the presentation, please go ahead and enter them into the questions box. We love questions, so fire away with any that you have. And secondly, at the end of the webinar, a quick survey will pop up on your screen and we would love to get your feedback, so please uh, take a moment to fill that out at the end. So with that, let's get started. I'll hand it over now to Saqid from Cambium. Hey, thanks, Chad. Uh, good afternoon and uh, good morning to the audience here. Um, thank you for joining this session that uh, Double Radius is co-hosting with Cambium Networks. Um, I wanted to take the opportunity to uh, talk a little bit about our uh, CN Vision product line from Cambium Networks. Um, and assuming that some of you may be new to Cambium as a whole, um, also give a very brief overview of uh, who we are at Cambium Networks. Uh, talk a little bit about the product, the solution, and most importantly, uh, do a live demo of uh, some of the attributes uh, we're talking about in terms of uh, CN Vision. So before we get into uh, the product, uh, just a quick overview. Um, if you've not heard of Cambium Networks, we are um, uh, we're very well known in the wireless internet service provider industry, the WISP industry. Um, in fact, our product line, the Canopy product line, one of, was the pioneering solution that enabled a lot of broadband uh, internet throughout uh, rural America and rest of the world. Um, Canopy and Cambium Networks was uh, part of Motorola solution for a whole number of years. Uh, 2011, we split out, uh, became Cambium Networks uh, standalone company, um, and then last year in 2019, uh, became a publicly uh, traded company. So the core heritage of Cambium Networks still continues from the days of uh, Canopy. We do uh, wireless and we do wireless well. Um, our product uh, solutions are a combination of hardware and software. Um, everything we do in terms of in the internet service provider market, uh, is all about uh, you know reliably getting uh, data across a wireless link um, and getting that home internet uh, to people's homes. The reason I mention that is that uh, innovation, that's, uh, that differentiation, reliability and determinism in our protocols and our ability um, is what we packaged up um, under something called CN Vision, which we are uh, presenting as a uh, purpose-built video surveillance backhaul solution. Uh, simply put, uh, outdoor cameras that you are installing that uh, may not have the fiber available or copper available um, easily, uh, we are presenting uh, our wireless solution as that purpose-built platform that you can use uh, for that purpose. And I'll kind of go over that a little bit more uh, in detail and uh, help you understand why it's differentiated and uh, what the nuts and bolts are. Um, Needless to say, this is kind of irrelevant, but our technology, the, the core technology that we have in our PMP, EPMP type solutions, point to multipoint, point to point, uh, today is being used in uh, lots of projects around the country and internationally for video backhaul, some pretty well-known stuff. Um, if you come to the city of Chicago and look up in the uh, street poles, uh, you clearly see our uh, canopy products backhauling a bunch of access cameras. Um, Having said that, um, you know, our core product line is designed uh, with a lot of sophistication that is carried over from the service provider industry. Uh, and what we've acknowledged is that in the video backhaul industry or security industry to be more generic, um, uh, the, the focus really is about uh, camera technology. It's about uh, your DVR recording capability, uh, image quality sensors and things like that. Um, the knowledge typically available in designing a complex radio frequency network, uh, worrying about alignment, interference, and all sorts of terminology is a little bit challenging. So we decided that we could take the complexity uh, that is under the hood that makes a very reliable solution 
um, package it up with some interesting features that make a lot of sense for the CCTV market and create something uh, that is a simplified from a usability, uh, rich from a feature set perspective, uh, and with all the performance guarantee that we typically offer for all of our service provider market. All that coming together as a dedicated video backhaul solution. We're not indoor, so this is not going to really apply in an indoor scenario. However, we have seen in very large warehouse buildings, uh, people may end up using our product uh, when fiber or copper is not available, but fundamentally it's an outdoor uh, play. Um, I will say that um, you know when we launched this product uh, last year, end of December, needless to say, uh, just as we got the things going, uh, this uh, pandemic hit us, and there's no doubt been a bit of a slowness uh, on security integrators going out there and, and doing projects. Um, however, I'm starting to see a pickup on that again. Um, to some extent, I think uh, the concern about uh, some of the uh, challenges we're facing today as a society um, in the streets of the big cities, or for that matter, the uh, the health aspect of things with social distancing and whatnot, um, maybe there's an opportunity that there will be more outdoor cameras deployed um, at the city level, at the municipality level, and school districts and whatnot. And that's where we come in and uh, we offer this solution uh, as a great uh, complement to every camera that gets installed. Um, why wireless? And uh, there will be a polling question that's going to pop up on your window that's uh, uh, going to ask a question that uh, was is uh, important for us to understand. Um, you just have to put in the response and go that. But why wireless? Um, I, I would suspect that most of the, of the audience that joined here um, already understand the value proposition here. But you know, fundamentally, uh, digging up trenches and and getting permits and uh, cutting concrete to run uh, cabling over existing infrastructure is just not economically viable. Um, having said that. I, from Cambium perspective, and maybe Double Radius will concur, uh, we are still looking at a, a sizable segment of the market uh, that is dealing with uh, video surveillance and CCTV, but not really looking at the cost savings on the connectivity option. Um, a project cost that uh, could run in the thousands, tens of thousands of dollars because you're looking at uh, a wired solution, uh, A, by going wireless, not only are you saving that money in labor and material costs, but the time for project completion becomes a huge plus for wireless. Um, needless to say, there's always that fear, hey, uh, what is this wireless stuff? Um, I can't touch it, feel it. Is it secure? Is it going to get hacked? I'll address a lot of that in the next slide. But fundamentally, the economics of wireless by far outweighs uh, the options available with uh, cable and fiber. So um, it's a pretty easy answer that uh, choosing wireless would uh, make a lot of sense for your business. Uh, if you happen to sell cameras, for example, um, if you're a camera vendor selling, let's say you win a project where you're selling 50 cameras um, to a small city or a small municipality, and if the installation of those 50 cameras takes six months because 20 of those installation locations had no cabling, um, imagine if you're able to propose to them, say, look, I've got the perfect wireless solution. Your installations can be sped up significantly. Now, those 50 cameras get installed up and running. Naturally, there may be a request for another 20 cameras, or another 50 cameras, because how quickly things got up and running and how quickly people are able to finish the project and see the benefit of those cameras installed. So enough about that, but that's kind of my fundamental pitch on the wireless versus uh, wired. Speaking of what we do with CN Vision, um, this is a, sort of an important slide because a lot of folks that um, are thinking of wireless, immediately your mind uh, drifts towards Wi-Fi. Um, Wi-Fi is great, but Wi-Fi is designed for a completely different ballgame, uh, whether it's the contention-based transmission, limited distance, what Wi-Fi has to do in terms of interference avoidance, the quality of service, all of that is designed with a system that has no control over the other side meaning it has to talk to your iPhone, tablet, uh, Android phone, et cetera. On the other hand, with CN Vision, we've packed all the stuff I talked about with our Canopy Heritage, a proprietary protocol. Um, so whether it's the hardware reliability or the QoS or how we allocate bandwidth and how we retransmit lost packets and things like that, your end result using 
a purpose bit wireless in terms of under the hood performance is your video is not going to come across jittery. Uh, you're not going to lose frames. Um, yes, 50 different Wi-Fi SSIDs may pop up in the neighborhood that you just put the camera with wireless. You will continue seeing that very reliable and deterministic uh, transmission of that video backhaul. Links are going to do as much as 600 megabits per second. You're rarely going to need 600 megabits per second. So if you deploy an, 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 a link, you're always going to have lots and lots of extra budget in terms of how much throughput is available to you in case you wanted to um, add more cameras or go up to higher resolution cameras and things like that. Uh, so I just want to, the takeaway for me on this slide that I want everybody to have is that it's a proprietary protocol. It's a proprietary air interface. Everything it does is different from wireless as you know it uh, for Wi-Fi based solution that caters to video backhaul. The portfolio is very simple. Um, we wanted to keep it simple so that um, it's easy to choose what you want to use. There's really five hardware SKUs. You see something called a Hub Flex R and a Hub 360. These are uh, meant to be your uh, gatherer as in the access point of the base station, or in this case, we call it the hub. This is where the data all comes in. The FlexR is uh, the name, as it says it, it's a flexible uh, model. So you can add antennas to it. Uh, we happen to uh, promote some third-party antennas from a company called RF Elements that designed the whole slew of antennas that mate with this product very well. Uh, and you get able to create uh, 15 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degree coverage areas. Then there's the Hub 360. Uh, 360 degree coverage, again, makes a lot of sense. Um, you could go into a car dealership parking lot, put this up against the wall. You could have 180 degree field of view, put up any cameras you want on any poles, and that tackles that. Um, and then there's the Micro Mini and the Max R, three different clients. Um, the, the, the names denote distances that they support. Um, Max R being a IP67 type hardened solution, while the micro and the mini are very small form factor, but packs a mean punch in terms of what they're able to do. Um, the color differentiation between the Max R and these two also denotes the fact that you can take a micro or a mini and simply from a GUI button change it to a hub behavior. And I'll show you some deployment examples here in the next few slides as well as a demo. Uh, but this can be used as a, a hub as well. This is also a good time to highlight that none of these Cambium products, this CN Vision stuff, has any type of licensing play, meaning we don't charge you because you want to use 50 meg instead of 10 meg. You get what you pay for. You pay for the hardware, you get the full software for free, you get the, the, the throughput and everything else you want, all part of the same uh, single price that you pay for it. Moving ahead, here's some of your deployment examples that I was mentioning. The Hubflex R combined with an antenna and a twist board adapter. You get 60 degree coverage. You can put in a mix of clients. Each client could have multiple cameras. Um, this is what we call sort of your hub and spoke point to multi point type scenario. Um, you can put a much wider antenna, 90 slash 120 from Cambium, uh, do similar fashion. If you happen to put the hub on a rooftop looking down, picking up a you know, a street, straight street or multiple streets with cameras along the way that you uh, backhaul back. You can use the 360 on the left-hand side with the uh, coverage across uh, a wider degree picking up radios, or you can take a micro, a small form factor, looks like an iPad mini that you reconfigure as a, uh, a hub and able to do a 30 degree azimuth coverage, uh, horizontal coverage and pick up subscribers and clients along the way. Last but not least, in cases where you're simply just adding a camera, the point-to-point -point solution makes a lot of sense. So whether it's a micro mini or a max R, you're able to configure them just as a point-to-point -point and backhaul a single camera or multiple cameras for that matter. Um, in Q4, we're also launching another product that might be of interest, which is this uh, max RP device. Um, this will sort of give you the power and switching option on the pole. Um, so you're able to uh, uh, push about 60 watts, 48 volt uh, into the device, and you have three PoE out ports. Um, you're able to get uh, 15 watts, 15 watts, and a 30 watt port, uh, along with some passive 30 volt, uh, 24 volt pass through. Um, so this eliminates the camera PoE, eliminates a switch. Um, this is an IP67 device. 
uh, with the good temperature rating. So you could put this up on the on the pole, use an external power supply, and essentially clean up your deployment. And then this doesn't have to be just cameras either, because these PoE outports could easily uh, connect up to something like a you know PoE powered LoRa gateway. Uh, LoRa being the uh, uh, IoT standard that could enable uh, safe city type application, um, other devices connecting to uh, this div uh, port and the gateway uh, for that matter, including sensors and things like that. So as you do security integration and video security, I'm, I'm pretty certain that you come across projects that are not just about cameras, but potentially other things. All right. Uh, moving ahead, this would be a good time where we will shift away. Actually, before I um, get into the demo, these are some of the screen captures, which is better suited with a demo. So we'll shift to that. But I do want to highlight a couple of things here, which is the fact that uh, you know there may be um, questions about uh, other value that we offer. Um, two other key points, three key points that I want to highlight. Uh, number one is that the warranty on all of Cambium C Envision products is a three-year warranty. So you're able to get uh, product replacements and have troubleshooting help and things like that for up to three years. Uh, we do have a 24-7 support organization. And because we've launched this product pretty recently, um, we're also providing quite a bit of pre-sale support on um, C Envision configuration and uh, most importantly, link planning. Uh, so if you have a project, you're saying, hey, man, I, I got a couple of cameras over here. These are the specs. Uh, do you think uh, this is the right bill of material I should choose? And am I okay doing X, Y, Z? You run that by us. We're happy to help you with that. Last but not least, uh, we also have some certification courses that might be quite interesting. Uh, there is a CN Vision video, wireless video surveillance certification course where we go through some camera basics, IP networking basics, some RF basics. Um, and then package all that up uh, under the CN Vision umbrella, walk you through the product UI, and, and just give you a lot more confidence in going out and deploying uh, wireless backhauls for video surveillance. So I, I, I really welcome you guys to try those classes out and, and take a test and become certified on that front. So with that, um, I will shift away uh, from the presentation. I'll come back again after the demo and uh, talk a little bit about uh, you know, pricing availability and maybe Chad, you can jump in and talk a little bit about that as well. Um, but with that, we are going to change presenters to one of our uh, system engineers, Chinmay Keskar, who will present his desktop, uh, walk through some key things such as a on-with integration into the hub and client, which gives us the ability to detect cameras and see video streams, as well as video management system integration. This becomes uh, two of our big key differentiations that uh, present C Envision uh, uh, as a very relevant solution to the security industry. Um, and, and you'll see what I'm talking about in terms of managing the radios and seeing statistics and alarms from a video management system that is purely designed for camera support, uh, but we're able to integrate with the hub and the client. All right, Chinmay, I will make you presenter and have you share your screen and take it away. Thank you, Sakit. Can you see my screen okay? Yes, yes, I think we can see the UI where you're logging in. I'll, why don't you go ahead and uh, go through your uh, uh, verbal update as you walk uh, through this. Sure, yes. So that's the web UI of the CN Vision Hub. So before, before we move ahead, let me quickly show you the topology. Uh, the hub that I just logged in is this Hubflex R to which two clients are connected. And on the Ethernet side of the clients, we have these bunch of cameras as uh, this typically looks like a typical deployment in the field where you have cameras connected, uh, mounted on the pole connecting to the client and client connects to the hub wirelessly. And on the Ethernet side of the hub, you would be having video management systems. So for today's demo, uh, I will be showing the demo. We will be showing the demo on the milestone uh, video management system. So, okay. So with that, let's log into the uh, hub. And right after I log in, as you see below the instantaneous download and upload throughput, what you see is all those cameras getting detected on the web UI of the radio itself. So this is our on-with integration. So what we have done is uh, 
on top of our radio uh, software we have integrated on with protocol on these radios so that all the cameras which are in the same network or i should say in the same broadcast domain as the radios get detected on the web ui of the clients as well as hubs so that's the reason why all those cameras are discovered on the web ui and then what we can do here is by clicking this video stream button we can replay the video stream from the camera on the web ui of the radio itself so the credentials that i just entered are the on with credentials that you may have configured on the camera if it is required for you to do manually if on with is enabled by default those are the default credentials that you would use to log into the camera okay so with that you can see the uh, video stream from the camera uh, sitting on the desk in our office and of course as you see here there is a reboot button as well uh, upon pressing which uh, the radio will be sending on with reboot command to the camera telling the camera to reboot itself so that's our on with integration so before i move to the vms integration i think we should talk about why this is important or how this on with integration can be useful to the end users as well as system integrators so we have a couple of examples one example or i should say a very small example would be at the time of installation so let's say your installer installs the camera connects it to the client then client connect wi connects wirelessly to the hub so either your installer or yourself can right away log into the hub and client and see the camera has been detected telling you that the install is successful another and second or i should say more useful case would be at the time of troubleshooting so let's say one morning you lost the video stream on your vms and uh, in order and while troubleshooting the issue what you can do is you can log in to the hub or a client and see whether that camera to which you lost the video feed on your vms is detected or discovered on the web ui of the radio or not and if yes then can you replay the video stream or not if yes then it tells you hey so everything from my camera all the way up to my backhaul points which are my client or a hub is working fine and there is a network issue or any kind of other issue uh, beyond uh, my wireless point so between the hub and the video management system so this on with integration helps you in that way for uh, troubleshooting as well okay so with that let's move on to our second feature which is vms integration or video management system integration feature where uh, okay so let me again show you what it does so radios have the capability to send events and alarms to the video management system and the events and alarms I'm talking about are radio related events and alarms. So one of the examples of which can be, uh, let's say the wireless connectivity between the client and hub goes down, then hub sends an event to the VMS saying, hey, this particular client lost the wireless connectivity with me. So for that, what you need is on your hub, first and foremost you need to enable the vms agent and choose which video management system you are using so currently we support nx witness or network optics milestone genetic wisenet a vigilon access camera station dw spectrum and digifort so and i believe these are most of the well-known or, or most used video management systems in today's state uh, so for this demo we are choosing milestone and these are the uh, credentials for milestone as well as the ip address where the milestone server is running port on which the v, uh, the event server for milestone is listening so now with all this configured this radio is ready to send events to the milestone but we also need to do some configuration on milestone as well so again go, uh, before we get into that so and that that configuration differs for different vmss for example for 
why is net wave or for network optics you do not need to do any configuration on the video management system on the other hand the configuration for milestone and genetic you need to pre-configure the server as well and all that information about how to do that can also be found in our user guide so if you go to our uh, user guide and navigate to this page called events and uh, sorry uh, configuring vms integration you see milestone wisenet uh, genetic uh, about so screenshot by screenshot information how to do the configuration so for today demo uh, for this demo purpose i'm going to show you uh, milestone so first and foremost what you need is uh, you need to add a device to the milestone server and for that it consumes one license so and that license is same as uh, you would need for adding uh, the ray uh, the your camera so as you see we have two licenses out of which we are using one for the camera and one for the uh, half flex r which which is going to be sending an events to the vms so and of course you need to do some configuration like adding analytics event again uh for for analytics event you need to go back to our user guide and see all these events that we support out of which i believe the most useful for you are station drop and station registration or a client drop or client registration so all you need to do is copy this uh this string and paste it exactly as it is in your analytics event and third and last thing you need to do is to create an alarms and to create an alarm and associate those analytics event to the alarms so now with all this configured now your video management system server is ready to receive the events which will be sent by the radio okay so with that let's go to milestone xprotect smart client where you see the camera that i have added and let's go to the alarm manager where you already see some of the uh, alarms like st underscore reg or st underscore drop being triggered for the sake of this demo let me trigger an alarm manually right now so for that in hub what i'm going to do is go to monitor wireless where i see these two clients connected wirelessly to the hub and i'm going to deregister one of the clients wirelessly and when i do that and quickly go back to the smart client where you see this new alarm just popped up saying st underscore drop and if you double click on it it shows you the reason being operator initiated disconnect of this particular client with this mac address so you know exactly which client was dropped from the hub so that's one part of the VMS integration. Second part is where you would need to copy this VMS preview link using which the hub is sending some of the live statistics to the video management system. So you need to copy the link and go to a smart client again or whichever VMS of course you are using and paste the link for which again you need to click on the setup button and uh, add it as a HTML page. So all you need to do is drag and drop this HTML page here and paste the link. Let me try to do that right now so that uh... Yes, so what you see here is Radio sending some of the statistics that we felt are essential like its name Instantaneous download upload throughput IP address Ethernet negotiation statistics system of time and then wireless interfaces up So this is the radio sending some of the statistics uh, some of the important statistics to the VMS in uh, live Okay, so that's our VMS integration and uh, again talking about the use case uh, which may be very obvious that uh again same example if you lose one of the cameras video feed on the vms but you also received the alarm on the same vms from the hub saying hey this client went down 
and you know that this camera this particular camera connected to this client so now you know the reason why the camera feed has gone down because client to which that camera is connected has dropped wireless connectivity to the hub so yep so that's that's it about uh, the video management system integration as well as on with integration so Sakhi, thank you we'll yeah thank you chinmay um so i think that pretty much concludes the demo as well as the uh, presentation um chad if you can hear me um are you seeing any questions come through we did have a couple questions and if anybody else wants to enter as we're addressing these first couple go ahead and enter them in now um, the first one was just about frequency availability in the U.S. If the 4.9 is available in U.S. models, yes, uh, 4.9 is available. Um, the the Maxar product and the uh, one of the hubs both have 4.9 available today, and the remaining ones are just wrapping up the FCC certification and should have 4.9. Okay, we did have a couple questions, and if anybody else wants to enter as we're addressing these first couple go ahead and enter them in now um, the first one was just about frequency availability in the US if the 49 is available in US models yes uh, 49 is available um, the the max R product and the uh, one of the hubs both have 49 available today and the remaining ones are just wrapping up the FCC certification and should have 49 activated in the software here in the very near future Okay. We had another question. How is wireless transmission affected by heavy rain, say for example, in Florida? It's it's not really because and in fact what's funny is that Florida we do have quite a few deployments. Um what you're thinking about when you think about heavy rain is more in the millimeter wave uh product line, like sixty gigahertz and stuff, where uh rain fade really impacts in that high frequency range. In five gigahertz, where we're operating, rain has uh, absolutely no impact that you would notice or worry about. Okay, we had another question. Is encryption on chip or processed in the software memory? Is encryption, uh, what about software memory? Is it processed is the question or was the? Um, it looks like the question is about where uh, if the encryption is on the chip versus if it's processed in software memory. Right. No, the there's there's uh, the actual encryption, the AES-128 encryption is actually in the chip level. Um, similarly, uh, also the AES-256 is also at the chip level. Uh, we don't we don't do anything in software for the encryption side of things. Okay. And then we have another question that came in. Do the radios do transport layer one communication? Um, so yes, uh, I guess in this case, layer one, think of this radio link as a, a wireless bridge. So it's essentially a wire. Um, so anything IP packet wise, you will be able to process this. Um, so if you got an IP packet, doesn't matter what the source is or what type it is, we'll send it over. Um, so that's kind of how you should think of this, uh, the links themselves. Chad, actually, um, there's one other thing we could do is, uh, while Chinmay has a screen up, there's a tool called a companion tool um, that we uh, make available for free from our support site. Chinmay can go through this. Chinmay make it relatively quick, uh, but sure. cover the main highlights on how you can plan your camera's deployment with uh, the radio frequency capabilities in mind. So. Uh, go for it, Chenmay. Sure, thank you. So this is the tool called CNVN Companion that we have designed to help you planning. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to import the project that I have already created. What you would be doing is clicking this plus button and adding the devices. So as you can see, I have added one hub and two clients connecting to the hub. So let's quickly go to the configuration of hub where you need to choose the country, which device interference levels based on uh, interference, what channel bandwidth you wanna use and you can add device latitude, longitude. In the configuration of the client, you would choose which client you are using. 
it is connecting to which hub and device lat long or you can enter the distance manually to the hub as well and what we do in this tool what i think is the beauty of this tool is you can add the cameras and configure these three variables which we require on the camera like resolution uh, we support all the resolution from qvga all the way up to 8k uh, compression so we do have you should be able to see in the list different variants of h264 h265 mpeg4 and jpeg mjpeg so based on resolution compression and frames per second we are calculating how much throughput will be required per camera so these two cameras connecting to client one requiring total of something around 26 so 26 is use link capacity on client one the other client using 5 mbps so total of around 31 mbps and this particular radio connecting these two clients at at these distances 20 megahertz channel width no interference your maximum uplink throughput is 112 mbps so out of which 31 mbps is being used so your link utilization is 29 percent so this tool is a planning tool that helps you answer the classic question how many cameras can i connect to these wireless backhaul radios so this tool is an answer to that all you need to do is add your deployment add your cameras and this tool tells you whether it's going to be possible or not i do want to highlight a couple other things that um, you do have a c envision uh, partner program at cambium networks you can send an email to c envision at cambiumnetworks.com and we will be happy to welcome you to the program we have a very strong channel program protecting pricing so that you not get into a, a pricing war and things like that. So uh, uh, the channel program is quite strong on that front. But uh, I'm sure Double Radius will be more than happy to um, send you information on that front. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And as always, if you have any follow-on questions, uh, please uh, send them over to us via email. Thank, Thank you. you, everybody. If you could please take a second, too, to just fill up the survey that will pop up on your screen, that would be great. Thank you for joining us today.